Good morning, guys. Good morning, internet. Good morning, everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ, and I'm here with another video for us to look at. Uh, it's another art time lapse of one of my polish illustrations, a much longer piece. Uh, it took me about 30 plus hours or so to work on this. Um, so yeah, it's a much more refined illustration that we're going to go take a look at, uh, at the whole process and how it started out and how <laughs> things ended up the way they did. So yeah. Um, so yeah, let's just start talking about what's going on in Krita right now. In Krita, I'm just making a bunch of sketches, getting some ideas down. Uh, the first few seconds just went by real quick. It was like a 30 minute session of me just randomly sketching things. And, um, if you rewind back, uh, you'll see that there were two thumbnails that I did on the far left. And one of them was this ice cavern. And so, um, I redoing that thumbnail basically into this sketch um, and then after this little ice cavern sketch, I'm going to do another sketch based on a 3d mock-up scene that I did. But before going on any of that, I really just wanted to make a note out, make a note of the idea behind the illustration in the first place. Um, just to preface and without going too much into details about what my idea was and how things evolved and all that stuff um i, I just wanted to make note of the, the prompt because i'm actually doing this illustration for another challenge prompt from conceptart.org way back in the day i think this was in 2018 i could be wrong uh yes 2018 um it says it on the very top 2018 06 21 and uh wow okay yeah that was a random website that i just went and took a look at that was actually textures.com love that site it's a great resource for textures um i should have edited it out but it's okay it's just you know a simple website anyways my whole point was the prompt was for this particular challenge was very interesting because typically you know concertbar.org had four like sub forums for challenges there's the character of the week which was the most undeniably popular one environment of the week which i love doing every now and then but no one ever goes there um and character or not character but creature of the week and no one ever visits that forum too from what i remember no one wants to join the challenges and those um but anyways it was a combination challenge from creature of the week forum and environment of the week forum and the challenge was to create a guardian of the armory that was the prompt um so basically there's this amazing guardian who watches uh the weapons of the soldiers um now i'm gonna go talk a little bit about some of my ideas and how my ideas just totally went far left field amazingly far left field but before i dive deep into my ideas and <laughs> where i went so horribly wrong <laughs> with this illustration um, before diving deep into that i just want to talk real quick about the process about what's going on so typically when you do a much more developed and more refined illustration um it's always better to make sketches tons of sketches before beforehand just to get some ideas on what to do um ironically enough i didn't do a whole lot of sketches for this one i did like a 30 minute you know like just sketch session just shamming and you know trying to figure things out here and there uh, but <laughs> i didn't really develop them except for this one this one was a sketch that i developed which i really like this piece you know and uh it would have been interesting to have developed this one but unfortunately i didn't feel like it really went very well with the prompt because you know armory tends to indicate you know a weapons cache cache 
C-A-C-H-E, I think I'm mispronouncing it. But it's supposedly, uh, anomaly is predominantly a place where uh, you store all your weapons, you know. And so the idea I have for this ice cavern is that these little um, technological things that has wires going to it, like the idea behind it is that there's like a weapon hidden inside one of these uh uh, technological things and it needs to be frozen so like my idea was basically like uh, like a Akira like the cartoon Akira uh, how Akira was preserved in a very low temperature you know place um, and that's where he was stored before he was unleashed again um, so that was essentially my idea for for this armory was that you know there's this super weapon hidden behind all this uh, technological refrigerators I guess that's the best way for me to put them they're like little refrigerator stash all around this ice cavern and that the guardian of the armory is apparently like that guy that was like on the cliff with those two soldiers um, but I did not go with the ice cavern idea simply because it didn't really look like, you know, there were weapons. And so I was like, okay, you know, as much as I love that illustration, and it looks really cool setting wise. I decided not to go with it just because it didn't look an armory. Now, here's the funny part about what I decided to pursue, which, you know, I decided to pursue this illustration right now, which is obviously the final piece you know like this is pretty much the beginning of the final piece and you can see in this final piece that um oh i, I was going to mention the 3d scene um i wasn't recording my work in blender when when i was doing these recording way back in 2018 i do now i, I record my work in blender now but I did the 3D mock-up mock, mock up real quick in Blender and then obviously imported it in Krita so that I could work on top of on top of it, you know. Um, but anyways, uh, going back to a quick discussion about the idea. So where I failed in this illustration is that it's supposed to be an armory and armory is supposed to be just weapons you know i mean back in the day it would have been your sword your shield and your armor thus armory <laughs> so that would be what would be stored typically in an armory um somehow though i decided that i was gonna do a motor pool uh, which is a totally different kind of storage facility. A motor pool typically indicates a storage place for vehicles. And so I was like, you know, I guess in my head, I thought like, you know, storing a bunch of tanks and a bunch of robots because you got to have robots because I love robots. <laughs> But, you know, giant mech robots would be like an armory. But in the end, I just realized, wait, like this was like halfway through, like doing this illustration. Right. I was like, yeah, and this would make a cool armory. And then I realized, wait, I didn't do an armory. I did a motor pool. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like a total misunderstanding of of the original prompt and the images in my head just did not really go well with the prompt which happens you know i mean i think it happens fairly frequently you know uh, an artist would get a prompt and they would misunderstand it and draw something else and so <laughs> this is just one of those things where i misunderstood something and i drew it a totally different way which is really cool though because even though it's a mistake right in, in production setting yeah, that would be kind of costly because then I would have wasted a lot of time doing a cool illustration on something that's not going to be used. So, yeah, that would be costly in time. And so in production means, yeah, that would be costly. But if it's like, you know, in, in my case where it was just for conceptart.org, it was just for fun. It wasn't for anything final. It wasn't for anything that needs to be 
needs to make money or any of that stuff it's actually okay to make these kind of mistakes because it actually leads you into a lot of very interesting things i mean the great example of that would be impressionism you know they were just experimenting they were just having fun and lo and behold it became a movement another great example of that would be the graffiti movement you know um at first it was just like a bunch of punks you know the facing you know buildings and whatnot and just being punks basically and next thing you know it blew up into an art form um which is what it is now um so yeah i mean making mistakes like this is actually very interesting because it leads to something that is totally unexpected um so in my case you know um it's totally unexpected <laughs> to have this creature which you know i could go on about the narrative of this piece it just makes me laugh so bad there's so many things i could critique about this piece it's a it's a nicely done piece it's you know when when i talk about my technique and all the stuff that i put in on this illustration technique wise i thought was great troubleshooting all the perspective issues which was such a pain you know was so awesome and going through all of that was really cool um some of the techniques that i ended up using like the depth nap which i don't use often and um depth of field effects which i don't really use often in my illustration that was really cool to employ on this uh painting reflections which i've done paint painted reflections before but not as in that as i did with this one that was fun so there's all these cool things that i experimented with in this piece that was you know on a technical level was very very cool but when it comes to the narrative of the illustration it just cracks me up like it just cracks me up to no end first of all was my failure in understanding the, the prompt like this is not an armory this is a motor pool which i've already you know talked about and the second thing that i was going to discuss about was the creature you know granted part of the challenge was to design a creature which i've obviously done very well you know i mean it's a creature it's clearly recognizable that it's some form of lizard man of some sort you know it's like some lizard ape of some sort but how i describe this lizard ape is kind of hilarious because i gave him clothes i, I don't know why you would give a creature some clothes but i did and look in my original sketch i gave him a sword i i don't know why i gave him a sword like oh man what was i just thinking you know it's just yeah it's a cool creature i can tell you that much but the creature is just yeah i'm so sorry i'm laughing at my own piece yeah Ooh. anyways my complete misunderstanding of the prompt just leads me to really odd and fascinating places but yeah so enough about my own critique about some of my ideas um so yeah it was just yeah anyways yeah enough about that let's talk about what's going on in krita and some of the things that have transpired uh while i was bashing myself for my ideas all right so um right now i mean i technically started this in 2018 right and um so i started this back in 2018 and back then i have a different process um i i was really inspired by matte painters um and whatnot and like their techniques and that's really what i was trying to employ at first in 2018 um which was I was really just trying to photo bash as much as I can and then just pretty much just paint over the photo textures that I did. Um, nowadays, um, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've recently started talking about going for a more painterly approach. You know, I would photo bash still, uh, but this time instead of just, you know, 
leaving the photos and and painting over them I've actually been smudging them into the scene which is what you'll see me do like eventually like right now this was still my old behavior in 2018 I was still doing this probably back in 2018 and yeah I'm like laying out all those photos just so that I could paint over it you know I did color edits and color filters so that you know it kind of looks like they kind of match with the scene but Eventually, I'm gonna switch out this practice for something else so much more different. Um, and you'll see uh, in a second. So yeah, that's what's going on right now. Uh, before that, you know, I, I did a quick sketch. Um, I, I've been skipping line sketches, like really good, nice, nice uh, sketches for a while now, uh, I guess, depending on the situation. I'll skip it. In this case, with this illustration, I skip a good line sketch. I just kind of, you know, concentrated on some like key parts of the illustration, which in this case was obviously the alligator uh, creature. Like that one had to be a little defined some more. And the robots in the back, I defined some more. And some of the things in the tank. Um, and some of my design motif has been very heavily influenced by the Baroque art period. So there's a lot of those elements that I was trying to put in into, into the um, robots and and tanks and armors. You know, like you could actually, it's actually a lot more apparent in the tank. Uh, originally, I was going to put a lot of Baroque design in the robots, but then I ended up ditching all those Baroque designs. Um, I love Baroque design. I I've been doing a lot of it heavily for the past few years now. Uh, Tricycle Reader was like a great example of it. But anyway, so that's like some of the sketches that I, I put in into the tank that didn't really ended up very well in the illustration. Um, but I mean, it's still readable. Um, and then... Like the soldiers uh, at the very front, like I barely paid attention to them. Like I just literally did not um, define them at all. So it was a very loose sketch, you know, that I did that I kept when I originally was using the uh, 3D mockup. When, when I sketch over the 3 mockup, I pretty much just kept that sketch for the most part and everything else has just been a photo bash which is what I'm doing right now. Um, actually, I realized this is the new 2021. Um, so basically what happened was, you know, so I was doing all those photo texturing, photo bashing in, in 2018, and then I quit working on this, you know, just because um, ran out of time, maybe. Uh, I'm not even sure what really happened. But when I brought it back up in 2020 this year and I started working again on it next, this year, I realized, you know what, I'm just going to reset and kind of like restart the whole thing. Well, not restart the whole thing completely, but I basically just went ahead and just did a lot more photo bash, which is ironic because I'm trying to stay away from photo bash, but then I did a lot more photo bash. And, but anyways, the reason why I did a lot more photo bash was because I do the smudging technique now, which I really wasn't doing before, which the whole idea behind the smudging technique is to put as much visual information as I can on a piece and then smudge them. So they kind of look like painterly, more painterly. You know, so you can see me working on the background and the robots right now, and you can see me smudge everything, and it looks a lot more painterly than the original photos. And so that's the reason why I went ahead and, you know, put in some more visual information because I knew eventually that I was just going to do the smudging thing so I could just have this one base layer for me to paint on. And so that's the reason why I did another round of just crazy photo texturing, just because I knew like a lot of those details are going to go away because, um, I just needed a base paint, you know, something that I could just work on. And so pretty much this is it. This has become my base paint right here. Um, this is eventually what I'm going to be working on detail wise. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much just sat and whatnot. 
so yeah um the next few things that i'm gonna do are just some of the edits that have been suggested uh for me like somebody uh, sky told me that i should dim down the tank on the far right and just really just focus on the alligator dude and so that's what what those light edits were um and i totally forgot i did this where i did a quick sketch of the background just so i could define it some more the background was getting really problematic people were so confused about what was going on in the back and the reason why i did a lot of photo textures on the back was because you saw like if you go back if you go back in time and watch the earlier parts of this video you can tell that the robots look kind of like bare or naked or like they're just kind of just standing there it doesn't look like there's something there that kind of connects the robots to the space you know like i'm thinking of like pacific rim and like the storage of those giant mechs that they have um you know there's all these structures around them i'm also thinking of like you know uh nasa and how they store their space rockets and space shuttles you know and there's all this um uh structures around it um and so that's kind of what i wanted to put in because it was kind of like naked <laughs> in the back uh so i you know photo bash all those nasa pictures which you just saw not too long ago and you know smudged them around and when i did everyone just got confused like they don't know what's going on in the back they thought they thought the two robots were like doors or something they thought it was like a big huge door so going in into this detailing process like i knew that was going to be a problem because i was like oh man you know everyone's just so confused and so that's when the idea hit me to do the depth map and depth of field effect that i'm going to like work on like in a little bit um just so that i could fade out the background like i knew i wanted to keep the robots because they're there because if i take them out then it's just going to be completely naked so i have to put something there which was the robots but i couldn't leave it just as the robots because then it just looks so weird so i had to do the scaffolding you know so because that's kind of like the idea behind all those buildings back there is just to be like scaffolding of some sort um so i had to keep it there um and yeah i was worried about like defining all of them and real quick i had to bring back my old 3d blender file because i needed some perspective guides and so i basically just added a bunch of perspective guides for myself just to kind of understand what's going on in the back because somebody made a comment about it you know those windows to the far left were just confusing them so much that they couldn't understand what was going on and so um basically i had to you know bring back that old 3d blender file just so that i could get um some good perspective guys and brought that rendered image back into the illustration just so that i could you know redraw some guides which is what i'm doing right now so basically my idea was to take out the windows because everyone was confused with the windows put in some more scaffolding which is what i'm doing right now i'm trying to photo bash real quick scaffolding in um just to kind of help out with the perspective but in the end i just decided to just crop this whole thing out because it was just getting way too confusing so yeah but anyways so yeah that's so far what has gone on um there's quite a lot of like technical issues that i kind of ran into which you will run into when if you start doing long illustrations, it just gets really problematic at times because the more you, details you add, the more you kind of had to balance it with everything else that you've done beforehand. And so once you start proceeding into like longer illustration work like this, where you pour in like 30, 50, 100 hours, it's all just a constant battle of balance, you know, where... You know you take some stuff out because you know the stuff that you have recently pull it put in doesn't really go well with the stuff you have put in before so you take them out and then you add some more and add some more and then realize that one or two things that you've added doesn't really go well with other stuff so then you take it back out and so on and so forth so yeah that's pretty much just kind of like the push and pull that has happened 
So a lot of the things that have, that has happened in the past 25 minutes is for me just constantly editing every single thing that people have commented on, like on the technique wise, the perspective was an issue. The background with the robots was just too confusing. So I had to do, do that quick sketch just to kind of outline some things out, you know, um, I did some lighting edits and whatnot. And now that the majority of like all the technical issues have been for the most part addressed, I am basically starting my detailing process. You started me detailing the robot. Like I've detailed the first left robot right there. It looks really, really nice. Um, but yeah, um, basically I've started my detailing process, which my detailing process is pretty much the same all the way throughout. You know, it's basically just delineating my edges, which is I'm making my edges sharper. Uh, kind of what I'm doing right now. And basically the whole idea behind it is just so that my shapes are readable. Uh, I accentuate the shadows. So if the shadows need a little bit darkening, I just kind of made them a little darker, accentuated. And then I add highlights. And then I rinse and repeat those three-step process all the way throughout each and every single section of the illustration that I'm working on at any given point, which right now I'm working in the background, which is typically my deal. I'm working in the background then slowly move to the foreground. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing in the next few minutes.
So I think this part is very, very interesting because this is the part where I have decided um, to do the reflections. Um, when I was making this piece, I was making this piece at the same time that I did um, the Royal Baby painting that I just recently published. And in the Royal Baby painting, um, I also employed uh, a reflection effect. Now, on that particular illustration, I didn't have to, you know, paint the reflection as much. I didn't have to go into a whole lot of detail with the reflection. And the reason why was because the floor, the reflections were on have a pattern to it. And so I knew that even like doing like full details in the reflection wouldn't matter as much because the patterns on the floor is just going to obfuscate it, right? And so I, you know, the reflections in that particular illustration was just very easy, was very easy to do, you know, like it wasn't as uh, daunting as I thought it was going to be, you know, it went by, you know, fairly quickly for the most part. With this particular illustration, no, since there's no patterns on the floor and it was just, you know, a plain color, I have to do a lot more work than I thought I was needing to do so um the part that you saw was just done very quickly because i was just needing like a kind of like a fill-in because i knew that eventually i was going to work on it right so i i just needed some like rough shapes and just some rough idea and some rough look so it was like an hour's worth of work you know but in the end you know I put in rough shapes in an hour and originally I thought, oh, I'm just going to paint reflections for just an hour and get it knocked out. I was wrong. <laughs> I ended up maybe spending like three sections, three sections, three sessions on the reflection um, just to fully detail it out and just to make it look good. Um, the ironic thing about reflections, though, is that reflections on floor is really tricky um because there's parts of it where it's fuzzy and there's parts of it where it's clear typically the closer it is to the object uh that it's being reflected on it it's clearer and then the closer the reflection goes towards you the viewer it gets fuzzier so it's really hard to explain um and right now i'm working on the depth map which I'll talk about in a second. But but going back on the reflections, the simplest way of explaining it would be if you were to imagine the two robots on the back right now, which is what we're seeing, right? Um, their reflected legs would be clearer while the reflected body would be fuzzier. And that's just the way it works typically with, with reflections. It, it gets fuzzy towards like closer to the viewer or like towards the bottom of the image i mean it's kind of hard for me to describe where it would be but i i think you kind of got the idea um so yeah so that was something i had to pay attention to and to concentrate on when i was working on the on the reflections eventually like towards the end when i started to detail it i had to start paying attention to which parts i can detail and which parts i can and leave fuzzy you know uh like the rough out sketch so that was like a challenge um the other challenge that i thought was interesting was, was the depth map i've seen people employ it before i think i might have employed it once or twice in an illustration but not to the certain degree like i did with this one um with, with this one the whole idea behind a depth map is pretty simple basically you saw me do the white and black image uh, work on a white and black image not too long ago, maybe like a few minutes ago. Um, the idea is basically you take a copy of of your photo and or your image, right? Um, so you basically kind of like, you know, take a copy of it and then you blur that copy out. And then you apply a transparency mask on that blurred layer. Because when you have that blurred layer, everything's just blurry and the thing's clear, you edit out all that stuff, right? So what you do is basically you 
take that blurred layer, apply a transparency mask on it um, so that some parts, there it is right there. I, I was just turning it on and off just to see what the effect would look like. Um, but the transparency mask will have some of the blurred parts showing and then take out some of the blurred parts. So in the case of the blurred image, right, where everything was blurring, the white parts would be the parts that would stay and then the black part would be the part that gets taken out. So you take that blurred layer and where all the black parts are, it would be taken out. And so what ends up happening is the bottom layer where everything is clear uh, will end up showing through. And so that's how you basically create this depth of field effect. Um, and again, like I mentioned, my original intent for the depth of field effect was to kind of hide the messiness of the background because I didn't know how the background was going to turn out. I didn't know if it was going to be too busy. Um, and if it was going to be so busy, would it be like, you know, would it compete with the foreground? Um, but I was wrong actually, you know, like with the lighting and with the value lighting that I put in into the illustration, I actually didn't really have to worry so much about the background because the background just kind of just ended up, you know, being hidden in the shadows. I mean, like you can see it right now without the depth of field effect and it actually works. It actually reads nicely, you know? So yeah, the depth of field effect, I didn't really have to put in there, um, as much, but since I put in a lot of work on it, I decided to just go ahead and just put it in there. Originally what I was going to do was to have the depth of field effect, like like that layer turned up to be like 70 anywhere from between 70 percent to 100 percent so i was really just going to try and blur out the back but since the detailed layer you know doesn't look that bad you know like the background doesn't really compete with the foreground as much as i thought it was going to be um i decided that i was just going to turn down that that blurred layer to like a 50 percent transparency you know or maybe even less. I don't even remember how much I turned it up to. But in the end, like the depth of field effect, I didn't make it as pronounced as I had originally intended it to be. So that was like a good thing. Because then you could see um, the detailed layer more. So yeah. Um, so those were interesting things, interesting techniques. Um, that I employed in this illustration that I don't do often enough. Uh, the reflections, uh, much more detailed reflections as well as the depth of field. So yeah, that was very, very cool. Um, right now, what's going on right now is that I'm photo bashing uh, some more details onto the alligator char character creature because um, I really wanted to do matte painting style where instead of smudging the photo textures, I ended up keeping them just so that I could paint over it. Um, because that was another technique that I was trying to do, you know, like I was afraid if the background got too busy that I really need to push all the details into the alligator just so that it would take away the business of the back. But again, like I said, I didn't have to worry so much because the value pretty much took care of it you know with that light just on that alligator dude you know being part of, on that alligator dude it just kind of just put everything else you know around the illustration into quiet mode you know so yeah but yeah those were some of the interesting techniques that i employed in this illustration
as we can see i have started working on the alligator creature um and this time instead of me smudging all the details away like i typically would um i'm basically keeping a lot of the photo textures intact just so that i could paint over it just like a regular old matte painter um so yeah for the creature's uh, face and arms and the fur at, down at the bottom, I decided that I was gonna do the whole photo matte painting technique. Um, as for his clothes, originally I wanted to do a matte painting style on it too, like find a bunch of photo textures and just paint over it. But I really couldn't find a whole lot of photos that, you know, looks, you know, look like the way I would want it to look you know I basically kind of wanted it to look like a like a Captain America uniform of some sort lots of stitching lots of layered stitching and layered clothing and that's kind of like what I wanted originally but I really couldn't find a whole lot of uh, references for it so in the end I have to make up a lot of this stuff you know and I was afraid on whether or not it was gonna go well with the photo textures because this is part of the reason why i kind of have a tendency to put in the photos for visual information do the photo bash for visual information but smudge it because sometimes um i, I don't like the uncanny effect basically the uncanny valley effect that kind of happens in illustrations where something looks too realistic that it looks almost fake you know and matte painting um kind of has that effect on me you know even a really well done one you know like at first glance it's like oh wow it looks amazing it looks like a, a photograph and not a painting but then like the more you look at it the more you see the inconsistencies that the more you just get turned off from the painting um and so there's a reason why i've been kind of going for painterly realism more than like photo realism um but yeah, I, I was afraid that my, since I was going to just paint the clothing, which I can't like mention earlier, I just, I don't understand why he's wearing clothes. But since I was going to paint the clothing, I didn't know how well it was going to go with the photo bash arms and the photo bash um, face and the photo bash fur. But in the end, since I painted a whole lot and I painted on top, of the photo bash a lot a lot more than i expected it ended up going very very nicely like for the most part the only photo textures that pretty much got left intact is like the bottom of the alligator's face all those scales drawing those scales individually would be so daunting it would have taken forever if i was to draw every single one of those scales in but literally, like, that's about the only photo texture that is left out of this whole painting. Um, the top of its face, like, I kind of painted a whole lot more on top of it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, literally, that's pretty much the only thing that's left. And the fur, too, actually, because I, I don't really think I messed around with the fur as much. Um, or maybe I did paint a whole lot on top of it. Um yeah i think in the end the fur became a lot more painterly than photorealism so yeah i, I think i am right the, the, but the only thing that ended up staying photorealistic would be the scaly parts of the alligator I, I realized like the back part of his arms too like i kept intact as much as i can just so that i could have all those scales in but yeah as you can see like the fur ended up becoming more uh painterly as you can see i'm like putting in a lot more paint than i did compared to the face uh so yeah but yeah this is this is really interesting to make note of because i you know at this point in time i thought i was really done with the illustration but i was so wrong um because literally in the next 10 minutes what we're going to be watching me do is just me pretty much just working on the reflections and the depth map which again i've mentioned i thought it was gonna go by so much quicker <laughs> but i was so wrong i totally misjudged the time but yeah i mean looking at this piece and looking at that illustration it looks everything looks complete everything looks detailed everything looks nice um 
so yeah everything that was left to do was the floor which was kind of looking you know really really plain and so here i am like editing it and like you can see the reflections now they're all just like fuzzy shades which was originally my idea you know just i just needed something there just to block things out now i'm adding a little bit more detail so i'm adding a little bit more shapes to kind of go along with it and it's really tough to paint reflections because you're having to like repaint something that you already did backwards a, a lot of people what they do is they just copy and paste um which is a great technique but the thing is that it, it, the placement gets really weird with it you know so instead of just copying and pasting i decided to just paint it out which is what i'm doing right now um I'm just basically painting it. Um, in some cases, I, I could have probably gotten away with just a simple copy and paste. Like for the robots in the background, I could probably have just copied and pasted it and then like flipped it, you know. As for the girl soldiers and the alligator, that one I might have had to hand paint itself and the tank. But as for the background, I could have just like copied and pasted it, but I decided not to. I just went ahead and just painted, repainted everything. So here I am pretty much just repainting everything and making it look like clear reflections. But um, as I had mentioned, um, with reflections, the tendency is for things to be clearer, closer to the source of the reflection and then fuzzier away from the source of the reflection. So right now that I have pretty much blocked things out, right? I'm about to start the detailing process. And you can see me work on the threads of the tank, right? Um, like that one I, knew I needed to have fully detailed. But you can see that Aside from the threads and the wheels that I put details on, everything else I left fuzzy, you know, because this is typically how reflections work, you know, it's the closer it is to the reflected object, the clearer it is, and then the farther away it is from the reflected object, it just gets fuzzier. So the top of the tank is fuzzy, the bottom of the tank is clear, so... Yeah, that's what I'm working on. And I read that somewhere too, you know, because I, I didn't think about it. Like I, I kind of subconsciously knew that that was the case for reflections, but I didn't think about it until I read like some article of some sort. I don't remember what article it was. Um, somebody was pretty much doing the same thing that I was doing, which they were doing reflections. Um, oh man, I wish I could remember who it was now so I could give them credit. Wow, yeah. But I like read it real quick you know it must have been a video too I, I could not for the life of me remember but they gave this great tip of advice on reflections and i followed through with the advice and yeah so i'm basically painting only the close stuff like the hands and then everything else i'm like leaving fuzzy but i pretty much had to do this all the way throughout the floor you know and like i mentioned i really seriously thought that this was gonna just be an hour maybe two at tops but then it ended up being like three or four sessions so yeah quite a lot of time spent on it <laughs>
So here I am working in the depth map and the depth map was pretty much just easy. It was, you know, just making sure that I have all my colors, my all my grays like correctly. Um, like the way I attacked it was that I outlined like certain areas that I knew uh, needed to be like a certain way. Like, uh, for example, like the foreground that was going to be black. Uh, I kind of marked out where they were going to be black and then the rest of them, you know, I kind of section off like areas of the painting where I was like, okay, well, this area is going to be like the fuzziest and then this area is going to be the next fuzziest and so on and so forth. That's why you saw me kind of like do outlines. So yeah, but yeah, after this depth map, um, the last few things that I did were just a few edits uh, based on critiques and comments that I got. Uh, from sketch zone and sketch bandits which the comments were pretty much like um somebody mentioned like the windows on the back was too bright so i dim it down um and then uh i move the soldier the soldier on the left uh somebody mentioned like she needed to be a lot closer to the group so i kind of moved her uh and there were some uh, comments about the background too but I, I for the life of me I could not remember um, what it was but yeah like the windows were just commented on because it was too bright you know they felt like it, was, it needed to be a little darker because it was competing with the light on the alligator creature dude um, but yeah this illustration was actually very very fun to do I mean honestly and it came out a lot better than I thought it was going to be Aside from like the the weird inconsistencies in the narrative of the illustration, like I yeah, the alligator dude, like I don't I don't understand what's going on there. You know, I mean I was fulfilling a prompt, which the prompt was that it needed to be a creature, because it was part of the creature of the week challenge, right? And so the guardian of the armory was supposed to be a creature. So I came up with a creature. It's right there, you know. Um but since like in the end this illustration just became like a personal project it just you know i could have thought about changing the creature into like maybe like a mech robot or something but honestly though that creature dude is cool <laughs> so yeah he's a one cool looking creature even though people are probably gonna ask why is there an alligator in this picture they're probably gonna ask that but he looks cool okay so he needs to exist so that's just about the only thing i can say in defense of this illustration so yeah but anyways this illustration video is about done and somewhat complete i am so glad that you guys had watched it all the way throughout with me uh, and i'm hoping that you guys learn a thing or two because this is the reason why i do this video so that you could you know join me in making fun of some of my art processes so yeah i hope you had fun with me making fun of my artwork <laughs> so yeah but really honestly though i hope you did learn a thing or two and you know picked up a technique or two so yeah anyways i am so glad that you watch it all the way through with me i will catch you guys in the next video like and subscribe good night <laughs>